The Elden Ring Shadows of the Earth Tree DLC was revealed last year in 2023 and with only this single image, fans including myself has been fiending for it to drop. However, a year later, we still have nothing. Like, I mean nothing. I mean, we haven't even got any big official news from FromSoft or anything like a trailer. The only type of news we're getting is leaks of the release window and some files updates on Steam and also playlist updates on YouTube, but that's it. However, whatever is taking them long, I hope it's for the best because it's better getting a finished polished product rather than a shitty one. But today I wanted to go over 5 things that we, mostly me, but for YouTube reasons I'ma just say we, wanted to be included in the DLC in no particular order. So yeah, 5 things I want to be included in the DLC. Starting out, the first thing I need is more new areas. Obviously it's a DLC and if you know FromSoft, the DLCs of their games usually takes place in a completely different area except for Bloodborne where the first half of the DLC was just a different version of Cathedral Ward. I know that from looking at the picture, the DLC seemed to be going in that similar direction where we are going to be in an altered version of where the main game takes place. However, it would be cool just to visit an area that we have never seen or been to before. Like completely different, whether it's in a dream or a hallucination, I don't care as long as it works. The second thing I really want to see is more blade wielding bosses. This one might be kind of confusing to some of you because, I mean, to be fair, a lot of the bosses in Elden Ring usually wield a blade, but what I mean is that you know how, you know, like how every Souls DLC has that one dope ass blade wielding humanoid boss? For example, Atorius, Sir Alon, Sister Freed, Gale in the Ring City DLC, Lady Maria from the Old Hunters, you know, those guys. I want a boss to carry on that legacy for the DLC in Shadows of the Earth Tree. I know we already have Melania, but it would still be pretty cool to have more. And plus, Melania isn't a DLC boss, she's just a main boss. Speaking of more, let's talk about having more important bosses. And by this, I mean more remembrance bosses. One complaint that Elden Ring got from many was that there were too many reskin bosses. And this is something that I hope doesn't show up too often in the DLC. However, I don't mind having more unique remembrance bosses. One thing that kind of makes me worried though is if the DLC is going to have only one or two important bosses while being filled with a lot of, you know, basically filler. Hopefully it's not that case and we have a lot of, you know, remembrance bosses. But I'm going to keep my expectations in check because again, it's just a DLC. I'm hoping for at least three. The next thing I want to see is dyes or coloring whatever i don't care dyes colors whatever as much as i didn't like the lords of the fallen game i still really loved how they allowed you to recolor your armor without making it look goofy this might be too much to ask for since it's a dlc and not a fully new game but it would be cool for them to implement something like this like bro let us get creative with our drip or something moving on more cool and unique weapons I have a mixed feeling on the weapons in a lot of the Souls games. On one hand, they were great because, I mean, there was a lot of them. And they have unique and special abilities that make them feel actually valuable. However, apart from the special abilities, they feel relatively the same. Now, I'm not saying that FromSoft needs to add different combos and shit like that, but it would be cool to have at least one trick weapon in the game, just like Bloodborne. And I know I said, you know, top five or whatever but this is number six and let's be honest top six doesn't sound as good as top five so i'm gonna just add this either way but the most important thing that i really want in the you know the dlc is a boss rush mood or boss select mood just like sekiro this is probably the main feature I want to see added in the DLC. I mean, from the beginning of when Elden Ring dropped, I was wondering why didn't they implement a boss rush mode? Or a mode where you can, you know, just select a boss and fight them, instead of just reloading different saves or going on New Game Plus each time. I mean, Sekiro did it, so I'm sure Elden Ring can as well. Bro, now that I'm thinking about it, I would have mastered all the boss fights in the game by now. If they allowed us to, you know, just refight them from like the a grace or from the round table hole or some shit. Hopefully they add that in the DLC. So those were my top 6 features I wanted the most for the Elden Ring DLC. However, there was something else I wanted to talk about. Something really important. Is FromSoft taking too long with the DLC? 
Originally, I wanted this topic to be another video, but I don't really plan on making news related type of content, at least not yet. But that aside, if you think about it, FromSoft is kinda acting like Kanye or Scamboy Cardi when it comes on to dropping shit. In FromSoft's case, it's games and DLCs, and the reason why I made this comparison is because FromSoft seems to be a bit secretive when it comes on to, you know, actually dropping shit. Like all they did was drop a single image and called it a day. Now I'm not really mad with this marketing strategy, I'm just kinda like worried. And the thing I'm worried, worried about the most is if FromSoft's marketing strategy is slowly killing the hype for the casual audience. Cause sure, us hardcore fans are more excited than ever, yet the more casual people seem to be a bit more quiet about it. But I think I'm just overthinking and who knows, when the trailer drops, it most likely gonna peak interest into the wider audience again and since you know it's a DLC, I'm assuming it might be around 30 to 45 dollars which would make them more willing to get it since you know it's not like they're paying $60 again or whatever. At least I hope it's not, you know, the DLC is not $60. I'll be fucking crazy, I'm not gonna lie. Anyways, I just wanted to talk about that for a bit, but yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think. And yeah, that was my expectations and thoughts on the Shadows of the Earth Tree DLC.